the indie platform that originally released in like 2014, I want to say. I believe that's right. And um, since then, the developers released a bunch of new campaigns, including this one, King of Cards, which is the newest one and also the last one, unfortunately, um, where we play as King Knight. Um, as with any other campaign, um, the characters you play are um, bosses that you would find in the original Shovel Knight. So they made Plague Knight, Specter Knight, and of course Shovel Knight at the start. And each comes with, well, pretty much original stages and more importantly, like their own unique kit in that they play completely differently. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Forgot about that time. We're speed running here. Ah, I kind of messed it up. Let's just try that again. Oops. Oh, okay. So as you see, King Knight's sort of main movement tool here is this dash, or bash, or whatever, shoulder bash. And I can cancel that bash into roll, I can also cancel it over jump, and that will sort of be the main tool for both movement and combat as we go. Um, so the main properties are that whenever I roll, I can actually, well, just roll through objects, whereas if I bash against something, um, I go into the spin state, as you see right there, and that allows me then to spin certain enemies, etc. And all of that will be part of the movement of this game. So in the first few levels, there's not too much to talk about in terms of actual like uh, mechanics going on. There's just pretty straightforward stuff, playing, you know, the basic, basic mechanics of the game. So uh, I guess I'll just talk about the route for a sec. Uh, you see me, for instance, right here, pick up this merit medal is what they're called. Um, I'm going to need a total of six for them, or of them rather, in this route. Uh, to buy an upgrade later on, on item rather, I should say, which will be quite important. Um, I'm also looking to get some money here and there. Right now there's not too much money collection, but I'm certainly thinking about that, and eventually I will get off my way for money. Also here's a cool trick where I tricked this beetle to get up there. Just need a little skip, and here's a very similar trick. Bait the beetle, bounce off of it, very cool. And yeah, we're just making our way through for now. Um, And again, so the actual route I'm playing here is the well, what we believe to be the, the fastest route now, where we pick the item called Turncoat and we pick the armor called Battle Pick and Din. Um, there's some other route ideas we had, and as we'll see on the overworld here, there's a bunch of like routing options when it comes to this game. And um, you know, the level structure in general sort of resembles, I suppose, SMW Super Mario World. Where um, there's a bunch of levels, they have exits, they have secrets ex exits, and then, you know, there's also levels that give you items, etc. So, you know, in, in how we consider our route, we have to consider, like, what exits we take to get to certain items, what paths are fast, etc. Again, for now, that doesn't matter too much, because right now we're still on, like, the linear stage, but this will be the last level of that sort of linear stage. And also, after this, we'll actually fight our first boss down the line here, but... And first, I still have to beat this, pick up a couple of merit medals right there. Again, I need a total of six. I'm sitting at three right now. I'm gonna get one more on this stage and then two more on another stage later. Um, upcoming screen is another one. Okay, make it down there. Hopefully make it on there. All right, so again with this one in particular, um, sort of the, the armor that we pick eventually will allow us to charge dashers, and I get into more detail into that. And then the thing we pick is, or the item that I talked about earlier is the turn code, which is an item that sort of makes you or allows you to go invincible for a bit. But with that being said, here's our first boss, Specter the Knight, who will be sadly the repeating occurrence, not quite the most fun boss. I like to call this guy a Puff player, for all my melee players out there. He just kind of runs away, tons of RNG. If you play ultimate, I guess it's more like a tuning link player, just runs away, spams objectiles. And yeah, I, that was fine, I suppose. Again, just a lot of RNG there. Can't really do much, too much about it, but you know, we got through it. And now, quick story tidbit just to, you know, brush the surface of it, I suppose. He gives me a card deck there for a card game called Justus. It's sort of like the main story culprit of this game. And, um... You know, sort of the idea is, I guess, that the world has been overran with, or with this popular new card game. And our goal eventually is it to beat all three Justice Kings. 
uh, which are going to like be the main bosses of this campaign. So we play each world, and each world has like different routing options, as I talked about. And then at the end, they converge to one level, which has one of these bosses. And um, and oh, I lost my train of thought there for a sec. But you know, th those bosses then you know after we beat all three, we eventually make it to the end of the game. And so here's the first idea of you know routing options we have. I'm gonna go into this level here, and again I'm still using I'm still needing two merit medals, so I'm gonna get them in this level. But more importantly, I'm gonna get the secret axe in this level, and that didn't always used to be the case. So uh, the secret exit here leads to the turn code I previously talked about earlier, which is the main item I'm gonna pick. Um, for a while at the start of the game, for instance, we would go the other route here. I actually would already go a different route before then and take a different item called the red, I think the red bomber. So sort of also gives you vertical movement options, which are now obsolete though with the armor I'm going to pick eventually. But again, just kind of looking into all the different routing options when it comes to this game. So this looks pretty cool. Okay. Mind if I get in a donation? Yep. Might not we, be a good time. We have a $15 donation from Gedrick that says, I want to see the Kaizo levels! Woohoo! And that actually put us to $100 of our $300 needed for the Vectronom Kaizo level showcase. So thank you guys so much for getting in your donations. Remember, we only have a little bit of time left to meet that incentive. So again, who's going to be the one to put in those $200 toward that incentive? Okay. So now I picked up the turn code there, which again is uh, what we found the six merit medals there. Also cool uh, little fast cycle there. And what the turn code does is you see like... You know, I activate it and I go kind of invulnerable for a while. And every time I get hit, I sort of charge it up. And then eventually I can release it into, um, you know, this, this projectile attack that gets stronger the more I charge it up. And so this item, you know, I used to have mixed thoughts about it, but honestly now I think it's pretty cool. It sort of combines the two aspects of this game being, you know, combat and, um, and movement. And we'll see it just be useful throughout a bunch of stages and a bunch of, like, smaller scenarios. Also, quick little thing to talk about there, you sort of saw the main hub there being the airship. I didn't talk about it too much, but, uh, you know, we'll go there, we have to go back there once in a while. And always you see me return to title, and then go back into the game. That's just because it skips some animations on the overworld, and it just turns out to be slightly faster to return to map there. Or return to title, rather. And so now we're already into the uh, first Juices King stage. So this will be the end of World 1. Again, we already brought, uh, bought our um, turn code, but what we still have on our mind is money, as I talked about. And the money routing is actually pretty tight, so you see me um, destroy checkpoints here. That will mean that I can't use those checkpoints anymore, but they give me money in return. And that helps quite a lot with just, again, routing in the money I will need. And again, I need that money to eventually buy a better, battery brigandin, which is the armor we're going to use. So we're getting some money here. And, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Here. Nah, okay, I'm fine, I think. But yes, yeah, so now we're gonna fight the, you know, first bigger boss after banging this one more checkpoint. And immediately you see, um, the turn code come in handy. I will inv uh, immediately kind of jump at him and get a turn code attack, and then kind of spin into him and get a double hit, hopefully. Perfect. And now he's gonna raise his arms, I'm gonna do that. And now he's gonna give me th uh, one of three RNG patterns. I kind of got an okay one, not too bad. Yep, this is fine. And so he's gonna go into his final attack. He's gonna bounce him a couple times and finish him off with a turn court. Uh, actually, I missed it. <laughs> we don't talk about those. <laughs> okay, that was still fine. Do another donation? Yep, that would be a good time. We have a $15 donation from Daniel that says, Hey guys, I guess I picked the right week for doing a night shift. Watching the marathon every night since Monday while supporting my customers. Thank you for the great entertainment and thanks to all helpers and volunteers. Regards from Germany. Nice, nice. Alright, so again, so now we return to the airship and we are going to have our money. We need 6,500 gold. And more importantly, actually, this bus, like being this bus, uh, enables us to even buy armor. So he's going to act as like the smithy, I suppose. So I'm going to buy the armor here, and again, I'm going to quit out real quick just because it's slightly faster. And so now finally we have pretty much our final layout for the rest of the game. And again, the way these two items interact is going to be really interesting, and pretty much why, you know, again, we had all kinds of routing options, which, you know, I'll, I'll talk more about when I have the time, but um, this ultimately came out as a supreme just because of, like, the weird interaction between these two items in particular. So immediately you're gonna see me use the battery brick and then here, and now, you know, when I hold my attack button, I can charge up a dash, and as you see, it goes further. 
to left and right, but more importantly, I can charge it up and now can dash upwards. And that is going to be very important. Kind of make our way through here. This is, again, a secret exit. Some nice little platform here. I gotta time these rolls, like, pretty much... Well, not perfectly, but, you know, pretty well. If I go slightly early, I just stumble to death. If I go too late, I stumble to death. And we make it through there. That was pretty clean. And so again, into World 2 now, we have a bunch of routing options see all these levels here. We're only going to play like about a third of them. We're going to immediately go down here. Um, again, we're not really looking for an item here. We have all the items that we need, so we're just looking for the fastest route. And honestly, in World 2, it's kind of weird because we could also go the pretty much the exact opposite of this route, which would be go completely top. And it would be about equal speed, but the bot route just turns out to be like slightly faster and also just, you know, way easier. So we go with that. First underwater level here. Underwater physics in this game are pretty straightforward. You just become kind of floatier, jump higher, fall slower. And then here's our beloved fish Bertha. I'm almost certain that's not her actual name, but she's called Bertha in the community. Actually, she's called Lankarov, I suppose. I'm gonna time a dash here. Hopefully. Nope. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll make it work. I'm just gonna pick up some health here just in case, just to be safe. Ooh, if I get to uh this is very scary okay cool <laughs> well that was quite unfortunate but that's not too big of a diff i think you can read donation real quick if you have one of course of course we have a 20 dollar donation from fuzzy that says had to donate for king of cards much love from america nice and uh, this is <laughs> this is something right now <laughs> okay cool so something you actually saw there, which again, it's a weird interaction I was talking about, is uh, if I dash upwards and then immediately do a turn code, I can sort of preserve some of the momentum and gain way more high than I would usually be able to gain with just a Brigadin. Also again, this is very weird. Okay, it's kind of have to do it for Normally you can go through here very fast, but it's kind of weird. I'm just gonna have to do this. Okay, we finally make it through. <laughs> that's one of the harder levels of World 2, so I'm glad that's over. And... You know, again, immediately, the tech I alluded to many times by now is pretty much, a, you know, the moon jump tech, I suppose, what we call it now. So right here, you're going to see me use it. I'm going to dash up and then instantly turn code. And then again, I gain more height, as you saw right there. But also, I can actually use the turn code to turn left and right during it. And, you know, pretty much gain more height while also having complete horizontal movement. It's just so much faster and so much more, like, agile movement than you'd normally be able to get on this character. And ultimately, that's what, you know, again, pushed this route over the edge uh, compared to others. So, we had another route that we used to do where, um, you know, most of the routes revolve around armor. So, another round would revolve around the lightweight armor. Uh, okay. Where um, the lightweight armor pretty much allows you to sprint. Very neat. And then, you know, to kind of make up for the amount of, like, vertical um, movement you would lose, you would trick the red bomb, as I talked about earlier. It's sort of like this projectile you can throw and then, you know, jump at and bounce off of to, again, kind of get vertical height. Uh, another idea we had is uh, get I uh, get an armor that is called I think Vigor Vestments that just gives you more Vigor, which is very good for boss fights. You know, Vigor is the the currency or not currency, more like the mana I suppose you use for items. So that's nice. Uh, the, and the, that route would use the the Scepter of Swiftness, which is sort of like this really cool dash item that allows you to skip a bunch of auto scrollers. But again, eventually it all got beaten out by this combination. Also, this level is quite tricky, I hope I can make it. Uh, all of, like, pretty much this entire level is on a global cycle. Uh, you'll see these sort of flame pillars, and again, they move on a global cycle, so I kind of have to move quicker, and if I do a mistake, it's gonna snowball very quickly. And I hope I make the cycle. Uh, we're gonna see it right here. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, sure, that was the cycle I was aiming for. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell that I missed the cycle if I didn't tell you, so let's just say that, that was it. Uh, you can read another donation, I believe. Of course, of course, of course. We have a five dollar donation from Preston Smith that says, first time watcher, fourth time donating. Donate the runner, kill the run. Don't kill the run. This is a good run. Randomized donations just for the kids. I, I literally I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Free all the mistakes. Uh I can continue that. Okay, I was thinking about quitting out there for the money, but I'll I'll be fine. It's okay. Uh, can I read? This can time I we do it oh. better. Can I read one more? Uh, no, nah, I believe I'm fine because this time I will hopefully make the cycle. Cool. If I don't accidentally pause. Okay, there we go. 
No. Hopefully that's enough. Again, all this is on global cycle, so the second I get off even slightly, it's gonna get really weird because I don't really know what's going on anymore. Of course I have backup strats, but it's all just kinda getting weird. Because I don't practice necessarily for big mistakes, but this should be fine this time. Again, hopefully I'll just sort of be on the similar cycle as I would usually be, and yeah, this looks to be fine. So I'm just gonna dash over here, and then again, kinda wait out for some of these pillars, but yeah, this is pretty much the cycle I would get, so we're good from here. And then I believe right here I have to wait real quick. Yep. And just make it to the end here. This ending movement is kind of cool. Again, just real time rolls to make it through the perfect flame pillar cycle here. Like that. And again, that's a secret exit just to, you know, be faster. And now already we made all our way through um, World 2. So again, you kind of see the route here. And the alternative would be the top route, but, you know, this works out fine. And so now we're in the final level of this world where, um, you know, I suppose the new mechanics are these bubbles you can bounce off, and also eventually you'll see these flowers uh, that sort of instantly put you in a spin state. It's a very cool movement at the first half of the stage here, like right here, and just again a lot of, well, quote unquote abuse of, um, of the battery brigand then, and just well showcase why it is so good. Um, okay, that works. But with that being said, sadly the second half of this level is almost a bit of an auto-scroller. So there's this sort of ship section here, or boat section I suppose. And actually there's a really cool but definitely not run viable way to skip this where again you would sort of do like insane moon jumps, roll all the way, dash up again, do another moon jump. It, it's incredible. I, I can't even begin to give it justice by just describing it. But you know, again, not run viable. And now we're just kind of singing auto scroll. So if you have anything to talk about Flagtastic, now's your time. No worries, no worries. I have a, I have something here. $10 from Warm Ham that says, Hi, Oddbod. Ham here. Yeah, Good up, luck man? with this run and your other runs going on this week, you busy lad. Hype to see you do all gold feathers on the side stream this Friday. <laughs> What's King Knight's favorite drink? Royal tea. Okay, sure. Yeah, shout out to him. Amazing Meat Boy Runner. And then we also have a $50 donation from JD Lars that says, Kaizo anything is fun to watch, whether you know the game or not for the kids, and then that just pushed us over halfway to our Kaizo level incentive for Vectronom. So only 150 left, folks, so let's get those donations in. Okay, so now we're going into the boss of the second world, and if this level was a good showcase by Brigadin is so good, this is gonna be a good showcase by Turncode is amazing. All right, and there he is, that was the boss. So, what happened there is I just kind of got really good charges. Uh, again, a triple charge of a turn code already deals 3 damage as is. And because this guy is just so enormously big, he actually gets hit twice. So each full turn code deals 6 damage to him. I do that 3 times, he gets 18 damage, so he has 2 more HP, I just bash him twice. And he just explodes in like, what, like 3 seconds? That's, again, part of the reason why turn code is just so good. Not only movement, but also fights like that. And now we're gonna do some quick marathon safety here, just because we have some leftover money, we're gonna get some health, because why wouldn't we? This is gonna help a lot in um, third world coming up, in particular with some of the bosses, because if there was a you know a hazard of dying to to actually loss of health, then that would be the stages to be so. And now coming up is probably my favorite level in the game, honestly, Forklift Torsion. Main mechanic here being these sort of, I don't know, what they are they, like pistons, I suppose? So, again, sort of SMW reminiscent of those kind of cloud platforms, if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Except you can also bash into these, and especially you can bash into him downwards with Brigadin. So again, just kind of very cool movement in this stage. You're gonna see a lot of cool, again, Brigadin usage, just as right here, and see bashing down just to save a little bit of time. And then, bring it in, downwards and upwards bashing into, um, into pistons. Also, here's a cool mole jump. Just like that. And again, this was what I was talking about when I said upwards bashing into pistons like that. For some reason that works, even though, like, intuitively it not should work, but, you know, video games. Okay, nice backup. And that's already that level. And so now forward, three routing options. Again, you see a bunch of paths we could take, theoretically. Uh, we're just gonna take the middle path. Again, we're not looking for any items here, so it's not, no motivation to like, you know, take a side path to get an item. We're, we're set for this run. Um, so we're just looking for the fastest path. Downwards path uh, would be a sunken ship, which has a few issues. Uh, it would spawn a mini boss that is kind of, you know, would just take time. And also has like one auto scroll, I believe. 
And the top road equally has just slow levels and I believe also an auto scroller. So this middle path is where it's at. And it also happens to be the coolest path I am on. Like this is this is pretty neat. This level is also cool. Uh, main gimmick here being you know you and these robots activating these weird platforms that then shoot out uh, thunders or whatever or bolts I guess bolts of lightning. Again with the turn code usage here. I remember there used to be like a bit of a meme where I first started to learn this route opposed to my lightweight armor route. <laughs> and I kept asking the guy who kinda came up with this route's plean about like how to do certain rooms and he would just say just just turn code for it. And I mean this level is a good showcase, like you just get past so much stuff with just turn coding. Wouldn't believe it, but invulnerability is kinda strong. Again getting kinda tossed back to the ship. We quick for a story moment, but upcoming level is really cool. Cyclone Sierra. Uh, I think you have time for one more donation. Until then. Of course, we got $20, sorry, $25 from Bungie that says, been looking forward to the Shovel Knight run. Best of luck. And he put those $25 for, towards the Vectronom incentive. So we only have 125 that it's left to go. Let's get that in, folks. You want to see this crazy Kaizo action. Uh, oh. No, that's not going to work. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to see that stage again, which is nice. So, there's actually a bunch of cool skips we can do here in the stage. Again, you're supposed to take a lot of these cyclones here, and we will take them eventually, but for now we can skip a bunch. So, for instance, this screen you see on the right side, there's this whole section we're never going to see, because why would we if we can just dash up? Uh, right here we can just dash under, hopefully, if I don't fail it again, right there. And then right here is actually really cool, we can kind of go above here, almost like out of bounds. Oh, well, I, I, I suppose it is out of bounds if you think about it. Uh, here's a neat trick, kind of canceling your dash there, just to make it slightly faster. And now I'm going to need audio for a bit, because uh, this is quite something. So there's an auto scroller here, uh, relying on these cyclones. And something weird about Shovel Knight is that, like, off-screen stuff is, like, geometry isn't loaded, but certain actors, I would say, are loaded. Uh, that was not it. Okay, let me try again. Okay, cool, yeah. Okay, so I just skipped the auto-scroller. Uh, again, to explain that is that... I, I sadly couldn't explain that while doing because, again, I had to listen uh, for when I, like, entered these cyclones. But all those cyclones are loaded off-screen, and more importantly, the goal ring at the very top is loaded off-screen. So if you kind of can navigate that thing blind, like, you can just reach the goal ring, you know, without ever scrolling up there. So perfectly, that saves, like, quite a bit of time. That wasn't quite perfect, but, you know, still save time. We'll move jump here again. Uh... So Heavyweight Heights has the infamous fly- oh, not infamous, just famous flying machine music. Uh, absolutely lovely, I love this track. Generally good music in this game. And Mei can here of course being win, pretty self-explanatory. You know, pushes you sideways, pushes you upwards, pushes you downwards. I see a lot of it. Also these like big lizards can be super annoying, but if you know what you're doing, they're not too bad just to get out of the way of. Now we're gonna make ourselves over to the final room of the screen, which is quite neat. It's this wind pushing on a cycle back and forth, and if you make it here through perfectly, then it just looks quite neat because we can like make perfect usage of the cycles. It's like that, and reach the goal ring with a final super dash. It's like that. Ah, <sighs> okay. And now I wish I could tell you that after this level there's another highlight, but honestly, the upcoming boss I'm not a fan of. I will be real. So we're fighting Spectanet again, and already I was kind of complaining about him earlier. Uh, he's a massive pain in the uh, lower region of your body, a PG-13 master. So I'm going to turn court him a bunch of times. And now it's going to look like I'm going to do a bunch of random stuff. Okay. This is going off the rails really quickly. I'm kind of setting up his health and my health and my position and a bunch of stuff here to eventually set up for his you know, a skip that skips the second phase completely. That look good? Yes, okay, nice. I'm so glad I got that. Oh. Okay, so what happens there is normally when he goes below 8 health, he starts transforming as he did here, you saw him like rise up. And, you know, when he actually tr finishes his transformation, he goes into the form, he would, you know, like his boss form that you would usually fight him in, in um, Shovel Knight for instance, or Black Knight. Um, and he also would heal full again, but as it is, you can just kill him before he heals. It's just very precise, so again, all of that like kind of weird movement I did there and just kind of weird setting up is... Can people see that? 
What the heck was that? Anyway, um, this one is really cool and has really good music. The original composition for this game, or for this campaign rather, I should say. Um, and this is going just great. Anyway, what I was talking about is, um, or what I wanted to talk about is, a bunch of the music here is obviously... Dude, please. <laughs> Alright, you can't make this up. This is clearly a speedrun right now. But as I was saying, um, a bunch of the music is already taken from... Um... Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> My shearing squad back there. Thanks, guys. <laughs> A uh, bunch of music was already made in, uh, you know, in the previous campaigns. Um, this song actually is not from that. Uh, this one is new for, you know, for this campaign. Uh, very sweet. Also, very cool level. Pretty straightforward in terms of like mechanics. Just, you know, these moving platforms. Nothing too fancy, but the way they use them is quite interesting. Just cool sections. There's a nice little fast cycle here. By using turn code again, I can get rid of these guys in advance and then make the cycle barely. I'm just gonna pretend that I never fell down that one section like three times. That didn't happen. And again, cool use of the frigate in here. I gotta go under this room entirely, like that. And then coming up is another boss that can be quite annoying, but hopefully he will just go right because we have set up for him. So King Birder just kind of moves around like awkwardly on, on the room and shoots a bunch of lasers and does a bunch of stuff. And it's just generally hard to predict and hard to kill. Uh, this is gonna be weird. Uh... I believe I'm fine. Wow, I saved that. I'm so glad. So that's what we can do right here. We can kind of trick him, manipulate him to go into a corner, and then we can spin on him, bash on him, spin on him, bash on him, and repeat that over and over again. To just take a bunch of his HP. And again, this is why you don't want to fight him, because he just does annoying stuff like that. But, you know, with that out of the way, and with that, you know, sort of fast attack cycle up there, we can get rid of him pretty fast. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but he heals up during the fight too, so again, just not a very fun boss to deal with if you don't have that fast setup. And so that was World 3 already, and now finally we go into World 4, the tower stages, which are completely linear, so there's no routing going on here. And uh, tower stages always in every campaign for Travel Knight, infamously difficult, infamously like risky. Just very little checkpoints, devs cost a little time, so yeah, I'm not putting pressure on myself, but uh, you know, I just hope these, goes well, these go well. Because if I die here, I might lose like half a minute. Half a minute is probably, you know, little. Probably a minute. Uh, this is interesting already. Alright, so in that stage again, you see these like spring bolts that we had in founding battlements earlier. Again, sort of just turn code usage there because it's insanely good. And then here we can sort of skip the entire right side of the screen, which is nice. Uh, well, we could if I would hit that up there. Like that, perfect. And now here's the Crusher, which pretty much exists in any Shuffle campaign in some form, which is like this big auto scroll with this like moving block. So if you have some stuff to talk about, now's your time. Of course, of course, got a donation here. Five dollars from Poker Face Vati that says, "Keeping the five dollar train rolling." To all the polls watching, the Germans are winning on the Gothic bid war. Let's try to get it back, shall we? And uh, tabbing back over to that German is that currently in the lead by by quite an amount, a total of one hundred and ninety dollars to Polish's twenty-five. So, do we have an, any answers for that? Now here at the end here, I'm going to kind of do a bunch of dashes up here to bait this fairy into coming up there just so I can sneak under him. And yes, these guys are called fairies. I don't know why they don't look like fairies, I will tell you, but they are called that. So upcoming is Lava Keep, or Lava Well. <laughs> Close enough. And honestly, if there was one level that I picked the extra health for, this would be it. It's probably the easy level to just die to, like, random attacks to. You see all these, like, liquid ninjas that are just kind of weird to deal with. Just very random do a bunch of stuff, do a lot of damage, hard to predict, so uh, hopefully I can get through and again turn code will help a lot, especially in this screen you will see there's a long screen, a bunch of liquid ninjas, so we can just kind of roll through all of them and don't die. Perfect. And now there's one more long screen here and then eventually we get into this stream of ice candy mechanic which, <laughs> which kind of, is kind of weird because we never really saw it because we never really played uh, the sunken ship stages, but yeah, this ice, ice skating here, which, you know, pretty easy to craft, you just 
every time you jump on here, you instantly are in like spin state, and you just kind of move faster. Um, okay. This ring can be kind of weird and tricky, but hopefully it will just go alright if you time your dashes correctly. This jump right here is kind of weird to time because, yep, okay, I messed it up, that's okay. And the biggest threat here is this lizard guy chasing you, but, you know, you can just outrun him like that, so perfect. And so now into the second to last level. Warp grab keep. Um, main gimmick here, pretty easy to grasp again. You see this, like, you know, portal sort of thing that's pretty much just a screen wrap. And also that rat gave a very bad RNG. Don't want him to be in that place, but I think I'm fine. Yep, this looks good. Cool thing here, just dash left, and... I mean, I... <laughs> I feel like I'm repeating myself, but, you know, Brigadon is just so good here. You see a bunch of these up dashes save so much time here. For instance, this one is very good. Um, and I guess I was on top of the ladder there. My bad. Try that again. Okay. I'm gonna do like a weird little dash here to bait this ninja into jumping so I can go over him. And. Um, I will most certainly pick this checkpoint for safety, given how this run has been going. <laughs> okay. And now we have the threaded tower ascent. This is sort of a staple in the Shovel Knight series, or any Shovel Knight campaign. Always at like close to the end of the game, this is like. Um, am I gonna really die here? No, I'm not. Okay, we're fine. This is like massive auto scroller goes upwards, pretty much always intense, always difficult, and yeah, we're just gonna sit here for a while. So if you do have anything to talk about, now's your time, Fantastic. I have a lot to talk about, especially Perfect. about what we're benefiting throughout the entire week. Again, save the children, y'all. Save the children believes that every child deserves the best chance for a bright future. That's why we are fiercely committed to ensuring children not only survive, but thrive. Bold in our, in our ambition and powerful in our care, we do whatever it takes to save the world's children. And again, let's join in on that $5 train because we have a whole bunch of more content to show you guys. And remember, that Kaizo level showcase from Vectronom by True Black Shark is only $125 away. And again, it's only in a run and a half. So we got to get those donations in, folks. All right, we're getting close to the end of the auto scroll here. Sadly, this auto scroll is weird because it's not like easy enough to where you can just kind of relax. But it, it's it's pretty intense. Like I have to balance constantly on these lanterns and just hope I don't fall down. And then at the top here, because it wasn't awful enough, they're gonna throw some rat at you. Why wouldn't they? And again, sort of same idea here. I can trigger the um. Where is it? There. Okay, I can end. I can end the level because the thing is already loaded before we actually see it. And now we're into the very final level. And again, as is with any Shovel Knight campaign, pretty much more or less a boss rush, with the Enchantress being the first boss, which is always the main antagonist. But until then, we have a couple rooms to go, just this folding section, and then um, eventually there's this you know, infamous block room. I, I believe this is a Mega Man influence, right? Isn't there a Mega Man boss like this? I believe so. But yeah, you know, you get the deal. Just the blocks constantly moving. You have to destroy them. Actually, I guess now I think about it, isn't it also a link to a pass room like that? We'll figure it out. <laughs> so we'll get through the last ones here. So now these blocks get destroyed whenever I jump off them. And I have to time some rolls here decently precise, so let's just hope I don't fall because that was bad. Okay, we made it. Alright, and now into the Enchantress fight, which is always not easy, but at least in this campaign I have a couple of fail saves just because Turncode has been really good against her. But let's hope I don't have to use those fails here. So I'm gonna walk up to her and get a full turn code charge. Hit her a couple times. That was perfect start. Nice. Wait for her to come over here again. And then bash a couple times. And now she goes into like her first dive stage, which I did not get lucky. She just kinda dives randomly and I have to like predict it, but predicting is really just guessing half the time. And Oh, this is looking really good now. Oh, okay. Yep, that was a good fight. Okay, cool. It was a bit of a rough start, but this, you know, you saw her do the dives again and the second dive phase was pretty much perfect. That was really nice. And so now she just, you know, combines the essences of all the Justice Kings or something, I don't know. Something of that nature, and she creates what is essentially the final boss to dream for it. It's this massive king-looking guy. And, you know, take a guess where we have to hit him to actually um, hurt him. She 
just guess what his weak points are. It's hard to tell. Also, a boss with a big face in the middle and hands on the side. I've never seen those before. Also Nintendo. So with that being said, you know, what I have to do is just bash into him. And again, this is where Frigadin is, like, so good. Because what I can do here is I can keep doing supercharges like that. If I time them just well enough, um, if he doesn't shoot me with lasers, that is. And, okay. Kind of fell down there for a bit, which, again, it's not easy. It's just very nice if you can manage it. But I need to, like, pretty precise timing here to, like, constantly hit him with the supercharges here. And then eventually he's almost dead. And now I kind of want him to move over to a specific spot. Uh, please die. Okay, there we go. And now, I wish that was the end, but there's still one more phase, but we can sort of do an exploit here. We can uh, disable this guy's AI, which doesn't skip too much, like a 10 second fight skip. But it's not a hard fight anyway. But normally you would have to like move onto this guy's hand and like bounce off them. But if we never land on his hands, just his AI gets disabled and... Time. That. So again, that final phase skip is neat, doesn't save too much time, but, you know, normally we would just kind of move around and move his hands around and his head around. And yeah, that was King Knight. 35 minutes, that's not too shabby without when there were some mistakes. But we don't talk about those, we talk about the things that went right, which is, you know, the Spectre Knight kill, that was nice. And, you know, as a master with credits, just shout out as always to the Shovel Knight community. And if you have any doubts about picking this game up as a casual game, you absolutely should because it's so much bang for your buck. You essentially get four games for one because, again, there's four campaigns of this and they all play completely different. And similarly, speedrun wise, I can encourage everybody to pick this up because pretty much, as long as you like 2D platformers, there's a decent chance there's something for you in this game because, again, sort of Shovel Knight is very combat oriented, whereas Plague Knight has this, like really flashy movement, Spectre has this like cool, you know, scythe grinding mechanic, very neat movement again, and then, you know, you just saw King Knight, and then between those four knights, we have like four different categories that also are all completely different, like low percent being kind of challenge, and then 100% being completionary, New Game Plus, you have like all these crazy weapons from the start that you can use and just make use of, and, you know, just very insane, and yeah, again, there's so much stuff here in this game to do, so... And encourage everybody to speed on it. Yeah. Thanks for having me.